Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a new watercolor spread for you and today I'm testing out the black tulip brushes. Um, they are available on Amazon and Zen Art Supplies was so kind and sent them over to me and asked for a review. And here you see um, the brushes that are in the set. It's a big flat brush and a smaller flat brush and also a cat tongue brush. They are pretty big compared to the brushes I usually use. And then they come with two round brushes and one liner brush, which I already love. I didn't have a liner brush before and now I use it a lot. That's the liner brush. I have one, but it's a very small one for really fine details. And this one is really great. These brushes are synthetic. There is no animal hair in them, but they are made to work like real brushes with real animal hair. Let's try them out. I will start with the flat brush because I usually make squares and this one had two hairs um, sending off. Here you can see them and they will not come back to the brush so I just cut them off with a scissors. I'm going to paint squares today and I will use the flat brush because this I think makes it pretty easy to make um, squares. There's still one hair. Yeah. The color I have started with, I believe it's the ultramarine pink from Daniel Smith. I only have two of the Daniel Smith watercolors and one is the ultramarine pink and I also have the cascade green which I don't like. Um, <laughs> the reason for that is it only works if you have a big um, area where you use it. If you use it in just a small area and very intense then you don't see any effect. And in my opinion the cascade green color itself it's not a pretty green. Next I have used the core Korean Acridone Gold. It's one of my favorite color combinations to use together and the core color spreads relatively good in comparison to other colors. Um, I have to say the Rosa Gallery yellow orange color. It's similar to the quinacridone gold and it also spreads in the same way. I can't remember which blue this is. Maybe it's the cobalt turquoise and this is the opera red. I really love this pinkish color. I like how the brush is working. I think I will not use it again for painting squares because it give me it gives me these harder edges and I believe it is better with a round brush and I prefer the squares to be not real squares with corners. I also am not sure if it's indigo or kind of a Prussian blue I'm using here. I have also to say that I usually don't use flat brushes, but after I got this, I used it a lot in my paintings because it gives me another variety to paint and to make brush strokes and to make marks and that's what I really liked and um, after all I can say I played a lot with them now and I really like them and I use them 
in my daily work depending on the size I need because they are pretty big I feel. So for larger paintings I would say um, if it's bigger than A4 I use this. For paintings in my smaller sketchbook I don't use them because they are way too big. I'm also happy with the amount of water they are carrying. I will give you all the details for these brushes in the video description, of course. I also used their brushes in a previous video I made. It's the one where I'm using the um, Paul Rubens metallic watercolors. So if you're interested in seeing the brushes at work, I will link this up at the end of the video. This last square I'm using, not the Quinacridone Gold, I use the Pyral Orange. It's a little bit darker than Quinacridone Gold. I now go in with watercolor pencils. I'm using the Durand Ink Tints and make some marks all over the spread. I like to draw some botanicals or just some simple shapes and patterns. To keep the contrast high, I'm using a really dark blue color. I'm doing this on the wet page because this makes sure that a lot of pigment gets off the pencil and gives me some really bold lines. After my whole page was dry, I come back in with the metallic paints from Paul Rubens and I will just make some botanical shapes on top with these paints and they are more on the opaque side, which is good because they are metallic. Um, I will just use them in similar colors to create kind of a interesting background effect, I would say. And here I'm using one of the round brushes. I believe it's the smaller one. And what I like about it is the really fine pointy tip. It's perfect if you want to paint leaves. Um, I don't like it that much if I'm creating petals for flowers because of the fine tip. Then I usually prefer a brush that also make, gives me a round tip when I press it hard enough so I can combine a round shape with a pointy tip with a flower petal. What I also like because of the fine tip you really can make thin lines. It's a bit harder with the metallic paints because they are more creamy um, compared to normal watercolors. I will now go in with the liner brush and add some finer details with a one of the blue glitter colors. I can't remember which colors I picked because the names are not um, common, so I, I don't have them in mind. You will also find links to these metallic watercolors in my video description. I really like that liner brush. It's my favorite and I've used it a lot 
um, during the last weeks. Um, I would say maybe if you are starting out with watercolors and you don't have any brushes, then this might be a good set for you, especially if you're planning to paint not in a super small size. Um, I would say it's maybe better be bigger than a four. It's hard to see the shimmer in the video of the metallic paints, but I really like how they stand up against the background when you see it in real life. I now make some fine marks, which is also great with this liner brush and I use a thick amount of the glitter paint, which makes it pretty opaque. And that's what I also really like to make some accents on such a watercolor spread. I'm not happy with the right side of the page. I feel it's a bit empty, so I'm just painting some leafy shapes with a liner brush just to experiment a bit. And of course, I also do some stamping all over my page. And I want to mention again, not sure if I have already done, that I will be on holidays from August 10th to September 10th. So there will be no shipping during this month. You can um, have access to the webshop and also place an order, but you have to be a bit patient until we are back from our holidays. So all orders that are coming in before August 10th will be shipped in time. All the others will start shipping after September 10th. I have used one of the vintage text brushes from the Mixed Media Marks stamp set from the number two and this is the numbers from the number one. To connect some of the squares I'm using also a stamp from the Mixed Media Marks. It's that stitching border and I really like the look of it. As the whole spread is pretty dark and almost has no highlights, I am going to add in 
some white crayon to make it pop from the background. A page with, with less white looks always a bit flat, so I try to bring back these highlights. And I'm also using other colors of the crayons to create some accents on the page. I wasn't sure if I should leave the page like this or add a main image, but then I found a bird of the sketchy birds on my desk, which w was colored in with watercolors and the color combination fits the page perfectly, so I decided to adhere it. To finish the page up, I have added some white splatters, that's what I usually do, it also makes everything pop up a bit more and gives it more contrast. And here you can see the birdie I have adhered. I hope you enjoyed this video and I think we will see us next Saturday. I will try to schedule some videos for YouTube. I wish you wonderful summer holidays and until next time. Bye!